shooting star. In any city, in any country, go to there, do that, and get this. Admit it, that's what interested you into this lifestyle. Promises of untold power in exchange for completing a few measly tests. That's the reason why there are so many bright-eyed new seekers coming out of the woodwork, hoping to get themselves a shiny new object. And that's the very same reason that those seekers rarely seem to keep their optimism and innocence after they obtain said object. The problem merely lies in how the objects disenhearten people and remove all joy and happiness. Well, except for mine, of course. Even the objects have their ports in the storm, so to speak. However, if you really are a seeker, you know the drill. Everything has its price, and I'm not going to give up such a rare treasure so easily. On a night when the moon is particularly full and bright, go to the river closest to the place that you hold most dear. Bring your most prized possession, and a watch if you can't see a clock from said river. When the time is exactly eleven o'clock, burn your possession. If I want to see you, you'll find a small blue marble in the ashes. If you see this, scatter the ashes into the river. Now, be patient. I'm not the fastest holder, and I need time to get from place to place. Don't be disheartened, however because I'll always appear by sunrise. Don't be naive about my blindfold when you see me. I can certainly see you. In fact, I'll be elated. I'll welcome you with outstretched arms and ask you something along the lines of, Don't you love how it catches the light? This is when you must make your choice. If you decide to leave the marble on the ground and walk away, then I'll remove your desire to find any more objects. If this will be your first, I may just have saved you from eternities of peril from other holders. However, if you have any other objects, their hunger will come back through you, stronger than before, and you may never lose yourself from their voices. And please don't try to defy me by throwing the marble into the river. That marble is my responsibility, and it is very frustrating to find. Despite my calm demeanor, I am still a holder, and I could always use a plaything to help me deal with my frustration. If, despite my proposal, you decide to follow the path of seekers before you, then you may ask me, what were they like before? And give me the marble. Take a seat, because my story can take a while. I'll tell you about times before the objects were made, and how they used to be pure, but they changed forever. Your mind probably won't be able to even comprehend most of the details of my story, but if you can withstand it, I'll let you have the object. As you've probably guessed, it's the blue marble. I will tear out your eye and replace it with the marble. After the pain subsides, you'll never know the difference between the marble and your old eye. Now here's where the perks of my prize come in. No doubt that's the reason you've come after this. If you show anyone your new eye, they'll see your version of paradise. You'll even be able to placate yourself for a while if you look into a mirror and stare at the eye. But the marble isn't perfect. As your hunger for the objects grows, People who look into your eye will find a vision of the reunion. 
you'll lose a few friends like that if you don't find yourself a blindfold. Furthermore, you'll find nothing but frustration with your illusions, swearing at yourself for not being able to bring them together. But don't dwell too much on these facts. It could be years before the marble would allow these things to happen to the seeker that possesses it. I suggest you enjoy the time between ownership and madness while you can, before it fades. The blue marble is object 177 out of 538. While it may be the brightest star in the sky, its light will not last very long.